Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, and welcome to my broadcast. Just double checking something. Yeah, there we go. Um, shouldn't rock the furniture. <laughs> Let's keep the camera stable. Um, welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author the speaker and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance and love life in business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, as well as being an <laughs> harassed by a cat right now. So there's meows coming from the background that may still happen whilst I'm doing this, because he thinks I'm talking to him, not to you. So if you hear meows, that's what's going on. You hear that? <laughs> I know, it makes it too far away. Anyway. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, I do this talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is number 394. And it is actually part three, really, of the talks I did yesterday, which is 393 and 392 before that, that have led me to this understanding uh, at the end of yesterday's broadcast. So I'm gonna recap briefly and then get to the topic of today, which basically the topic is, ladies, an apology, gentlemen, an invitation. And that's the title. And I'm now going to sort of recap and then explain. So bear with me. Um, first of all, two broadcasts ago, two days ago, on Thursday it was 392. In case you're tracking the numbers, I talked. I talked about um, an article I read in Reuters about the ten most dangerous countries in the world for women, and number ten. Let me say, sorry, let me say it this way. The top 10 countries from the, the most dangerous for women in the world out of 193 countries in the United Nations. And those top 10 included Afghanistan, India, Syria, Saudi Arabia, and number 10 was the United States. Yes, the only Western country and the only first world country, if we use that terminology, in the top 10. Actually, they in more than that, I think. But anyway, so that was disturbing to me and I did a talk about that on Thursday. Yesterday's broadcast, 393, I was referencing um, an article or a post that I saw that showed that in 2013, there were over 600 laws governing um, the female body, and there are zero governing the male body. Now, I don't know how accurate those numbers are, because I, I don't have verifiable proof in the article. However, I do know that for many, many, many years, and right now, especially with the issue with Kennedy and the Roe versus Wade conversation, there are once again laws, concerns on the books that control women's rights and freedoms, mostly perpetrated by men. So there's this, this thing going on, and the, and the dangers to women, back in in the broadcast talks, the broadcast talked about on Thursday, was about how many women are a danger in this country from men. It's you know the rape culture, um, uh, sex, um, the sex trade, all these things are putting women in danger. But it's the men mostly doing it. Mostly, not everybody, just mostly. So, at the end of yesterday's broadcast, I had a kind of an epiphany thanks to friends' input. That spoke to this, and I want to speak from that point forward. So, give me a quick recap. That was the cliff notes from the last two broadcasts. What hit me yesterday in sharing at the end of the broadcast was. One of the reasons, I believe, why men have been mistreating women for so long is because we're afraid of you. Yes, we're afraid of you. And the way I understood it and recognized it was, is that we men, and this is only one piece, it's not the whole answer, the whole piece, but it's one piece of this. I'm being stared at by a cat. <laughs> yes, I see you over there. If he shows up closer, I'll grab him and put it on camera so you can see I'm not talking to myself or you. <laughs> so, we men are raised to be, well, not, in, let me go this way, innately the masculine men are competitive. That's part of our culture, our DNA, our, um, well, not our DNA, but our, but our way of being. So that we, we as hunters go and compete for the kill. We, we compete for everything. It's kind of the way we're wired. Women are not wired that way. The feminine is not wired that way naturally. Although women have been trying to copy the men because after the women's liberation movement, women's liberation movement, women were taking their rights to go work in the world, which is basically copying what the men were doing in the world because the business world up to that point was a male dominated culture. Anyways, let me back on track. So what I realized was, is that men as a, as a general declaration 
have been afraid of competition from women. Again, we compete with each other, but women showed up in the world in different places of leadership or strength. We got threatened by that because one, we don't understand women to be, <laughs> to be transparent, generally speaking. And secondly, we think that women are there to beat us and we're afraid that they will. And that is very shaming for a lot of men. Being beaten by other men is, is, is bad enough. Being beaten by a woman is emasculating to a degree. Now, this is all wiring in the psyche I'm talking about. Not just talking about physical stuff, I'm talking about the psychological and inner workings of how we think, I believe. Or I believe we think. So, what I recognized yesterday, and I'm sharing now, is, and I want to sort of break this apart a little bit, is that we have been believing or under the false belief that women's leadership will threaten men. That if you ladies take on roles of responsibility, take on leadership roles in the world, be it business, be it cultural, be it political, be any area, a lot of men feel threatened by that. Because we don't know how to be around that. To be honest, I'm being I'm being transparent here. We are not, as men, really smart around women, as has been proven many times. And I'm speaking generally again, not everybody, not all men, not all women. But in this context, I want to make some points that hopefully will be on help clarify what I believe is why the discord is between men and women in some ways and there's a lot more fin lot more um, finesse there's a lot more um, nuance is the word I'm looking for in this conversation I'm just giving you some broad strokes of what I've become aware of and, and see where it sits so first of all to take part one of the title and this is going to sound really weird because I'm just one guy saying about this but on behalf of men in general, I feel we owe you ladies an apology for how we've assumed and treated, assumed stuff about you and treated you based upon inaccurate thinking. And we don't yet embrace and understand that fully. The second part, which is the invitation to men, is that we as men need to step up. We as men need, I feel, to change our role in the world, not to be, um, not to be, what's the word looking for, threatened by or at, um, <laughs> you want to come here and talk about it? Sorry, right, this cat is giving me some grief or maybe he's, he's giving input to the conversation. So, the invitation to men is for us to have a bigger space inside ourselves to encourage, invite, and respect women stepping into leadership. Because it's time, gentlemen, that we make some room for this. Another piece I talked about, by the way, just, just sidebar slightly, this was on the couple, of, it wasn't yesterday's one before that, was about how there's some components in our history that exclude women. Exactly. There's a, um, I'm sure you can hear him on the camera, I certainly can hear him, so I'm thinking you could too. Yes, Stormy. I'm going to try and finish this talk without getting too distracted, so my apologies if I've been distracted by this cat in the background. <laughs> we men have been a place of, we've been challenged by women, to be honest. We've been, um, track let me come back again excuse me a second as I just rewind myself because I just totally went off track for a second there see that's the thing having a cat here it distracts me from focusing that's one of the challenges being in being the masculine body is that we are um, single focus when we lose focus get pulled over here getting back on track is like where were we again <laughs> so that's a little example of how we are as men you may have noticed that before oh yes that was the piece from yes okay that was the piece I was looking for I've said this a couple of times before, so I'm not going to be afraid of saying it again. I'm not going to be blaspheming. Um, and being raised Jewish, I can get away with it, I guess. Is the Bible is not complete. <laughs> that's, I mean, I'm saying this now, but I'm, I'm making it very clear. There are scrolls, and there are parts of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and Gospels, and other pieces of the Bible that have been discovered in the last century that have been added to the Bible. The King James Bible, which was written many, many years after the events that it describes. So accuracy is a question. You know, 
It's like the Bible is like a book based on a true story, loosely. So there are pieces in the Bible that are missing, including a whole section called the Gnostic Scrolls. Gnostic Gospels? Gnostic Scrolls, I believe, that are deeply rooted in the understanding of the goddess principle. Now, if you've read the Bible, or if you study the Bible, there's no mention of that anywhere in the Bible, strangely enough. My belief, and this is me speaking, not some political stance and all men, this is me saying it, is there's definitely been some editing of the Bible to make it male-dominated. I mean, the fact that God is called a he, a capital H, all the way through, it's pretty telling as well that this, the teachings of the Christian faith, the Catholic faith, and as long as the Jewish faith too, are based on the fact that God is male. I have issue with that. <laughs> so do a lot of people, but I have issue with that because I feel that God is, I mean, the teaching I now follow and have been done for the last 30 years is that God isn't, first of all, God is not gender-based. God is independent. Though. God is they, it, us, them, whatever you're going to call it. It's not a he or a she. So my feeling of describing this is that the Bible itself is flawed in its languaging because it does not speak the truth. And that's the reason why over the years, many years, in history books, in philosophical books, in religious books, women haven't been honored. So my apology in a sense of saying it on behalf of men, and I'm not saying it personally, I'm saying it as a, <laughs> across time perhaps, there's a feeling of one has expressed that there's something that needs to change. So this may be the beginning of a movement. It may be an invitation. It may be ignored. I don't know. Hello, Anna. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining my broadcast. I'm on. I'm, I'm beginning to a deep topic the last couple of days, so you're catching the tail end of it. Um, so partly is for women. It's time that we men, the invitation for gentlemen, invite you to step into the role of equality, for real on all levels, including in the business world. Thank you. Nice to be seen. Um, including in the social environments as well it's like there's so many places where we have yet to wake up to this and I know it's going to take a lot to wake everybody up because there's a lot of people who don't do this yet but I know a lot of men who do so I count those brothers because we are stepping to a place now where our, th where our willingness to be authentic to be humble and to recognize feminine power when we see it is part of the change that we're inviting onto the planet so this um, very brief talk because I'm realizing this is going to this, this is going to be part of my book, I know. I've got another book brewing now, which is um, about the divine feminine. And this part of it is the conversation about the male, female, masculine, feminine um, context and opportunity to transform and change how we relate to each other and how we deal with each other on the planet because it's time to change it. It is way past time, to be honest. So again, recap quickly for women. Um, you've been given a disservice. You've been, you've been, you've had a disservice for most men, in, I'm speaking historically speaking as well, so it's time we change that. We can't change the history necessarily, we can rewrite it, because history is written by the victors usually, but we can go back and change things. <laughs> Thank you, preaching, yeah. <laughs> it's not Sunday, I'm not doing gospel, well, it's Saturday, I guess Jewish that counts. Um, <laughs> so one, that's part of it. Secondly, is for us men to start recognizing that women aren't in competition with us. We don't lose by having, and this is the big thing for men to listen to, gentlemen, we do not lose when women win, because it's not an either or, it's an inclusivity. When women win is the key. When women are successful, when women are thriving, we win as well. Because when women are successful and thriving, they're happy. And guys, you know if you're in a relationship with a woman, when she's happy, you're happy. <laughs> so that's a simple teaching that most men are like, no, 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 no I've got to fight to compete, I can't, I can't let them win. It's like, get over it. It's, it, you are going to fail ultimately you're only holding on to victory out of fear and control and neither one of those are going to help you so for us men the invitation is to let go of that to be more in the flow to be more willing to honor and respect women and eventually each other because that's part of the journey too is that you start elevating the conversation so that all of us as human beings respect each other because it's time and it's challenging with some of the people out in the world right now who are um hell-bent on controlling other people it's challenging to be accepting of that so I'm not saying we have to be blind accepting go and be a be, um, sheep steamrolled over far from it I must, I'm saying that we wake up and we take back our power and yes not from scarcity but from abundance as, as Luana, Luana said absolutely true yes we have a definite um, 
recognition that the scarcity that's driving all the panic and fear and closing the borders and all that sort of stuff that's going on in this country isn't healthy and it's not gonna it's not gonna last. It's driven from a place of fear, of worry and control, and none of those help us grow. So it's time to change that. And I see the ripples. I mean the took the marches are going on today, this Saturday by the way, um, if you're watching this on the day, are indicating that it's time that as we as people are waking up, are gathering and are no longer being asleep at the wheel. It's times are changing. And this I, I suggest I trust will be part of the conversation going forward so there's that um, thank you for being in my broadcast by the way thanks for watching um, this is really I can say this this is a was well, this is part three of my two three part conversation this is more of the offering of next steps and of um, Hi Karen, I know you thought you might be broadcast. This is this is PS from yesterday. So you started me yesterday. Hi Zena, nice to see you my broadcast as well. Um, so Karen, your point yesterday that, that launched me a whole bunch of thinking after the broadcast is over. So today is kind of on point for that. So if you want, if you just want to watch from the beginning, you'll see where it's moved to so far, and it's still going. So there may be different tomorrow. So this is basically another bullet point in my list, and this is going to be part of the book that's coming together. There's an, there is another book coming now, beyond the book I'm already finishing in in August. Um, this book could be my own book again. This will be my second solo book, my third physical book. I never planned to be an author. What the hell's happening? <laughs> but this, this, I've been writing about this, and it's coming clearer and clearer about the divine feminine. It's part of my work in my in my writing and my speaking and teaching now. So I gotta say yes. The spirit's going knock knock knock. So thank you, Zeno. I appreciate the love. Um, yes. So if you didn't see my other two broadcasts, they were more based upon the shock and dis and despair in a way, not despair, maybe disgust. The last two broadcasts before this one I talked about some articles and I, met, I, I recapped them beginning of this one so if you watch this one from the beginning you'll see the recap and, and cliff notes. Um, this is my 394th daily Facebook live called Messages for the Masculine Supply of the Feminine Heart so I'll be hitting my 400th later next week. Wow. So um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before you can see them on my business page on Facebook and you can also see them on my YouTube channel, which is barryselby.com. Sorry, Barry Selby is my channel. Message the Masculine is a playlist. If you have, if you, if you, if you prefer to hear my broadcasts, because I've got friends of mine who say they love to actually, they can't watch them when they're driving or working out. They love to listen to them. I just launched my podcast, which is basically is these are repurposed into audio tracks. So some of them are 10, 15 minutes long. They're not very long, and most of them make sense. <laughs> so you're welcome to check them out. If you want to find, I'll, I'll post a link to the YouTube, the iTunes. Um, um, podcast you can listen to you can I'll put the link in below when I sign off so now you can watch them on YouTube you can watch them on um, well thank you Zena it's basically it's repurposing it's also because people have been asking me so I, I, I'm meeting the demand <laughs> so there's about 10 or 11 broadcasts on there right now I'm gonna keep adding them as I get a chance to because I got it takes time to upload them onto iTunes so video on YouTube audio on iTunes um, and on Facebook there's video as well if you want to get help in the area of relationship and also the feminine piece that's coming up more and more, if you want help in that area too, on my website, which is barryselby.com, the first button in the menu is Let's Chat. Click on that, sign up, let's talk. Um, also, there's my online programs, my book, my coaching, etc., etc. Lots of stuff there. Um, this is an ongoing series of talks. I seem to have nothing to stop me yet. <laughs> my phone was on the fritz today. I thought I would be there to do it, but it, it came back online. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being in my broadcast. Um, take care of yourselves. Oh. And here, here's the guy who was talking. Because <laughs> he was making lots of noise early in the broadcast. Yes, he was upset because I was talking to you, not to him. So um, with that, I'm going to sign off and go mess with the cat. I will talk to you tomorrow. That will be number 395. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, please put them below in the broadcast, or after the broadcast, rather, and I'll respond in the comments afterwards. And if you know anybody who should watch this, please share it with them. Any groups or places you think this might be inspirational, please share it with them as well. And I'll see you again tomorrow for, say, 395. Um, who knows? It may be another piece of this conversation. So this is part three, unofficially, of the last three broadcasts. So thanks for watching. Thanks for the input. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for being here. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.